Hi, I'm Sean Bill Joyce, the director of the Walk Hill River School. We're a nonprofit arts organization in Orange County, New York. Now, we're different because our mission is not only as an arts organization to create economic opportunity for local artists, but it's also to preserve open space and small family farms. Now, this has come about because I and several other artists uh, notice that we lose a lot of our small farms to development at a rate of about 300 acres per year. So many of us artists are in love with the bucolic vistas and the, the panoramas that define our county, the Black Dirt region, the Shawanga Ridge. So we decided the best way to protect this would be uh, through art activism. Now, it's a challenge to make a living off your art anyway. And when you mix in something even remotely political, like preserving open space, then you have this double whammy. Uh, part of the beauty of our organization is that we are promoting the preservation of small farms and open space. And I think that we have been able to turn what would be perceived in the business world as a weakness into a strength. It sets us apart from other organizations and it creates new opportunities for us to uh, bring in people who wouldn't normally come to galleries or art classes. Now, as director, much of this has come from my personal experience. It, as a woman in the arts, it's a challenge to make a living Anyway, for any professional artist, it's a challenge to make a living. In Orange County, we're not known yet as a cultural hub or mecca. So we're having to create our audiences. We're having to create social bases of collectors who come out and buy our artworks, as well as take our classes. Um, and for me, I didn't move to Orange County expecting to open up an art school. I moved here as a young professional artist from New York City. Uh, I was disillusioned with the art world there because it was very self-serving and there wasn't much heart and soul to it. Orange County is a place that has rich history, it has beautiful people and heart and soul. And so this is this is where I chose to live. Now, making a living in the place where you live is, uh, is always the goal because none of us wants to commute down to the city or uh, have to go to another county to run our business. So when I first got here, I surveyed, you know, what opportunities are there for, for women? What opportunities are there for artists? You know, where is the money going? And essentially, you know, we're the food shed for New York City. One of the strengths we have is the beauty of the region. It's attracted artists for 200 years. I'm no exception. I came here because it's a beautiful place to live. So how can we use this to our benefit? For me, I started off as a, a, an artist here who did craft shows, and I worked the craft show circuit for many years, uh, doing portraits, um, selling my paintings on occasion. Um, not really making a huge living. It's about the same as working in a fast food restaurant, you know, under 20 pounds a year. Um, the arts are not a well-paying field in general. There's, uh, you know, definitely a ceiling to how much you can make in a county where the arts aren't a major focus, but that's changing and growing, and really the only limitations are the ones we set on ourselves. So, Having said that, I started painting in farms and open spaces throughout Orange County and taking people with me. And many of these people were from inner cities and had never equated uh, a green bean in a can from a green bean on a bush. So this was their first opportunity to meet the farmers that grew their food and, and to see the earth that feeds us and sustains us. So we painted in different farms, and it became a very popular uh, class. And before long, we had 50 people registered and showing up at different farms. 
when that started to happen, we realized that it, it was much bigger than me and the handful of artists that hung out with me. So we opened the school, and that was really where the Wallkill River School got its start. There was a need, meaning in Orange County, there wasn't uh, an art school per se. There wasn't a place where people could take classes. There were only two commercial galleries at that time. Both were struggling. Only one of them is still in existence today. Um, so there was definitely uh, a void in the marketplace. We filled that void, and the way we did it was mostly through sweat equity. Uh, I immediately knew that I couldn't do this by myself and partnered with many other artists, men and women, young and old, some established, some less established. And because that partnership benefited everyone involved, we were able to make a going concern. Um, today, we have classes that have anywhere between 5 and 25 people in attendance. We uh, visit at least eight farms and open spaces throughout the county in the warm months, and we host about 20 classes in our school in Montgomery. We host uh, 40 different artists that we represent in monthly shows in our gallery as well. We have art sales. Uh, to the tune of about $25,000 a year, which in Orange County is a large amount of sales of fine art. Um, we're beginning, this is the early stages of this organization. We're in our first decade of existence. We've been in this building uh, for about four years at this point, and we're hoping to continue through probably one of the worst, most harsh economic climates for the arts uh, to be an indefinite organization. So we offer any Orange County artist the opportunity to teach. And that's a huge thing because there's not much entry level positions for artists, especially young people uh, trying to start off a career in the arts. Now, the market dictates which of these artists will be successful. These are the classes we offer. We have artists ranging from an 18-year-old Valley Central graduate who teaches cartooning, that's Rudy uh, Troncone, to a watercolor professional with uh, 40 years worth of experience who's teaching a watercolor workshop and is internationally known and is in his 80s, and that would be Mel Stavis. And most of the artists fall somewhere in between. We give them the chance to teach. The market dictates whether they're successful. We also offer classes for children, and one of our largest programs was a Local Foods Cookbook, which marries two of my favorite personal interests, uh, eating and painting. So we have paintings of uh, Orange County farms and open spaces, uh, along with some of the best recipes for what's grown here and in season, where you can get it. And what your best friend's Polish grandma says is the best thing to do with it. Um, what we have done is created a place-based arts movement. This works in Orange County. It might not work in Rockland or Pike or some other county in New York State. It works here because of our specific natural assets, the black dirt, the food shed for the city, the history of the Hudson River School, and uh, the lack of an established culture up to this point. Uh, we happen to fill a niche and be in the right place at the right time. Now, for me as the founder of the school and as the current director, it is a gift to be able to make a living doing what I love. I, in my own career, have had to wait tables for 15 years, I've had to work as an apprentice and assistant for other artists. I've had to do many different uh, occupations and wear many different hats to finally reach a point where I can um, make a living and make art is probably the most fulfilling and gratifying thing that can happen to an artist. And in terms of a woman, you know, next to motherhood, it is definitely one of the most 
most gratifying things for me. Um, my commute to work is a walk across a parking lot. I live on campus, and every time I step out the door and see this beautiful building and know that I am going to work at a job I created in a building and situation that would not exist if it hadn't been for my efforts. It's a dream come true. My heart skips a beat. And there are many times when I put a key in that lock and tears fall down my cheeks because I'm so grateful to have reached this point. I don't know if it'll last, and I don't know what the future will hold for the arts in general, but I do know that we as women, especially creative women in the arts, have to face challenges today that there are no formulas for. There are no set ways to get around. We have to think outside the box and come up with uh, different solutions and, and methods of making a living and become entrepreneurs of a different color. So uh, the best advice I think I could give anyone trying to make a living doing what they love is don't limit yourself. You know, the marketplace sets limits, the economy sets limits. Don't allow yourself to limit your dream because if you're in the right place at the right time and you're filling a need and doing what the community needs, then it's gonna work. Find a way to make that happen.